Where's the legal observer? Come down here and take colour numbers. When I see them, please come into that back fence and face them where my caravan and my kids was. And my kids looking at it. It's absolutely been a nightmare. I'll never forget it. It's like some horror movie where there was sirens and helicopter and I could hear an ambulance coming. Leave your fucking weapons and your shields! I wish that we could turn the clock back as far as before the gate was locked and everything like that happened and we could just hinge into the caravans and move everybody to safety and out of here. Stop! Fuck! Yes! The eviction of Dale Farm, the Irish traveller site in Essex, cost £4.8 million, resulted in 45 arrests and left around 80 families homeless. We fought and we're strong women and that's where we'll always be. We you find... certainly have fought. I don't <laughs> oh. think anyone here would deny that. No. But I mean, has it been worth it, especially this Every, month? it's been worth every fight. It's the best thing that us travellers ever done. And to show the world that we ever only wanted a peaceful eviction to begin with. And that's the way we're gonna leave now. We're proud, we're proud people, so is our activists is very proud. What, what will you do now? Well, the future is not bright for anybody, we just have to wait and see. We're gonna get our caravans and we're gonna pull out to the front. After a four-day operation to secure the site, bailiffs begin to clear 46 of the 49 plots. What's the plan with the caravan today? The hair? Yeah. I don't know is that. She, is I, your mum in? Yeah. Can you ask your mum what's her plans today? Uh, is what I've talked to her. I don't want to yeah, come in. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to come in if we've got the... How are you feeling? I believe in solutions. I believe that you should sit around a table and if somebody has done something wrong, she would be to say, I've done this wrong, but I'd like to do it like this, particularly with a council. We're talking about councils now. You should be able to negotiate. Councils are willing and able to negotiate behind closed doors and they will do that right up until they have no other choice. But the idea for me was to keep an open channel so if there's anything that I could do at any point to either stop it or lessen the impact or find a solution, then I was going to be there. Are you coming here, my boy? Come on. Right, what's just happened? We've got a bit of history. The best news ever I've got for you is that you're allowed to live here in the middle of an eviction, in the middle of a building site. <laughs> you can stay on your lawful pitches. The Sheridan family won the right to stay at Dell Farm during the demolition process, after a court order protected three plots on the site. The farm was home. It was uh, like a sanctuary for us. Miss Chiller's education, most importantly, it was a place for my mum and dad to be, and it was it was just it was just a wonderful place to be. It was a safe community. It was safe for our children. There was no outsiders in here. It was nearly all one big family. You're not going trick or treating because all the bulldozers and the lorries are still up now. Play around this path, dress up around this path. Oh, it's too much more The Sheridan family are without mains electricity and are living off diesel generators which run day and night. They can't feel the stress in as much because if you're not showing it, they're not showing it. So by letting them enjoy everyday things and it's Halloween today so it's, it's their day too, it's the kids' day so. I don't think we should lay the eviction on them, should we? My children can remember from the start to finish. They never really travelled. So for me, it wasn't as bad as it was for them because I was evicted from the roadside thousands of times. Please come in six o'clock in the morning doing a dawn raid and getting up, not even getting a cup of tea, hinging off the gas, putting it in and, and just gone. 
kids just really takes life so much to heart. We have nowhere else to go, and you're trying to explain to the kids that you haven't got anywhere else to go. We did have a lovely home, though so it's really hard to explain to them. Two weeks after the eviction, Jimmy Tom Sheridan and his brother John returned to the local school. It's half a mile away and educates around 100 traveller children. It's one of the main reasons that the Sheridan family want to remain at Dale Farm. I want my kids to get an education. I want them to know how to read and write. I want them to make something in their life. I just don't want them to be like I was. I can't read, I can't write. I miss out an awful lot of things in life that if I had, we had somewhere to go when we were kids and let us get an education, things would have been different for us. No, I have been the <laughs> <laughs> You will forget your head you would have one screwed on. <laughs> Later that day, the solicitor for Basildon Council, Lorraine Brown, arrives on site to inform the family about the next steps in the demolition process. Absolutely clear that that road is part of the enforcement notices and that will be removed. It, you know, it's a matter of choice here. We've been very clear about this all the way through. If these three plots want to come back on once the hard stand is removed and that road is going to be removed, that's a matter for you. Just because she's a solicitor and she has an education, we haven't. We're not stupid. You know, they should Basel and Council think we're stupid, but we're not. And you know, they just mix us out and when they talk to us and we look sound at us and makes us hear a lot of stupid idiot travellers and that's it. But we're not, we're still here at Basildon Council. <laughs> After negotiations with Basildon Council, the family agreed to leave their plot to allow the removal of the hard standing. The next day, the family moved their caravan and the council begin work. After 10 years on the family plot, Nora Sheridan watches the clearance. Well, at this moment in time, Johnny, it's just ended our world, really and truly. They've ended our world. Because watch my dad put everything that went into this plot in, and now they've just taken everything he ever built and put it, just took it away. It's heartbreaking. Candy Sheridan arrives at Dale Farm to negotiate access for the Sheridan family to get back onto their plot. The reality is, is that instructions are to take this road up here, yep. all the way along, to leave a footpath. You're talking about all of this going up there. So you're well, that'd be, I'm of told it's got to be wandered down the, down the middle of the road, or near to the middle of the road, so there's enough room for the pathway. Oh. Then, do you know when you put the trailers in, how are you going to get them off, Candy? Exactly. Um, so when they want to leave, how are you going to facilitate that? We want to get back out we want to get out. It says it in the court order. Facilitate. Okay, well, again, we'll go back to legal and ask that question. Somebody, um, the council plan to dig up, or bund, the middle of the road, leaving their plot inaccessible, except on foot. I was just constantly um, looking for that little ray of light to be able to, not that it would stop, that you would try and negotiate things so it would be a little bit more peaceful or that you would achieve the impossible, which was keeping people on the pitches. I think they um, sort of ran circles around us. Unable to live on their plot, the Sheridan family have moved onto the road leading up to their former home. They still have no access to mains electricity or running water and have to share one toilet between 40 people. You're told as a traveller you can't settle. You're told that you've got to find your own land. You're then told that you still need to travel under planning law and you need to come and go. What's Basildon done? You know, it's just thrown the book at everybody. When the head contractor said to me, we're having to bund the road, he said, I've never bunded in a traveller before. I punted them out, but never bunted them in. He kept saying it to me. And I remember standing in here with him on the road and I had no vision. I said, where are you bunding it? I thought in my naivety it would be bunded at the end. I had no idea the expense that they would go to. Cruel. It's really cruel, isn't it? Dig up the road as they've dug it up. Even ground. In 
is suitable for children to play. Yeah. Is this home? Yeah, just it was, it was home, but we pulled out on the road. What's it like on the road? Nah, bad. Really bad. The cars, you can't even open your door. A planning officer from Basildon Council arrives to serve enforcement notices. I think you might be able to guess why we're here. I need to remind you, read this injunction that we the council what time. Yeah, I'm waiting to get back on my plan. I'm not taking that off of you. Well, we will leave you it. You can here. leave it at the top of the bundle because I'm not one of them people that's gone into that Listen to me very carefully. We have three lots of pictures. Yes. Yes. yes, and we were entitled to go back on our three lawful pitches. Yes. So we're entitled to stay here until you unbound that road and then we're stuck on our lawful pitches. You're lawfully entitled yeah. to go on to your pitches. Yes, you are. You're not entitled oh, to stay. Oh, dead me oh, and you're not, Excuse you're not me. Here. You're not, at the moment, lawfully entitled to stay in this part oh, of the land. Oh, oh, this oh, 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 we want oh, Basil and Council to take us to court. We want you to take us to court. We're pleading for you to take us to court. Okay, what's your name? I just want you to give and she's not giving you her name. Yeah, you want to go back on your yeah, we want, no, we yeah. want you, we want you to take us back to court. Take that with you. Anyway, we... well, take them with you. you no, you're no. in breach of the injunction no, by not. keeping caravans no, this side of the farm. We had no running water, no electricity, no toilets. We've been living along the road with cars up and down you can hear them as we're videoing. And the settled community has got to understand if we had someone else to call, we would be gone. There is no way we will be still fighting Basildon Council for a smelly road that we're eating the muck and we're eating the dirt. And the families eventually moved 50 yards further down the road to the safety of the authorised side of Delphi. You cannot get elected if you stand up and say there has to be a local gypsy site, a traveller site here. You can't get re-elected. The whole idea of Dell Farm is for people to turn on the television and say, look, the travellers didn't have planning permission, they have no right to be there. Basdon's right in getting them off and Basdon's going to return it to Greenbelt. They have no intention of doing that. It's not possible to do that in the way that they bunded the site. The use of the materials, which is all the tarmacking, has all been scraped and broken up. Nothing will grow on that. Nothing will be seeded. It's been a tough, a tough six months. It's just every day have to, life have to go on, eviction or no eviction. It's get up in the morning, look after your children, do your chores. We've got to make a home. We've got to do something for the children. So it's looking after them is the main priority at the moment, and just getting on with life. One of my arguments has, for the last four or five years has been with Basildon. They are your Irish travellers. They are Essex, Basildon, Irish travellers. The fallout is massive. You know, a whole community is just, instead of being able to go about their normal business and put in their applications and make provision for their family members, it's now a hundred times harder. I promise us so much. I will never trust a council, a judge, a solicitor, a balancer, a police, Pillows. I will never trust nobody again. Nobody wants a gypsy for their neighbour. Why? That's, that's the million dollar question.